Brexit, Labour to support Norwegian EU proposal. Labour MPs are being urged to back a plan to keep the UK in a Norway-style relationship with the EU, as MPs debate Brexit's next steps. MPs will vote later to see if any proposals can win a majority, after failing to secure majorities last week, under the Common Market 2.0 proposal, the UK would leave the EU, but retain freedom of movement and make contributions to the EU budget. The Speaker has selected four motions, including one on a customs union. The SNP are also proposing to back the Common Market 2.0 motion, put forward by Tory MP Nick Bowles. But the PM spokesman said ending free movement was a very important factor for the public when voting for Brexit, so they would oppose it. Shadow Foreign Secretary Emily Thornberry, speaking to the BBC's World at One program, refused to say whether Labour's position on free movement had changed. When asked if she was compromising on freedom of movement, she said we are trying to pull the House of Commons together. Theresa May tried to get MPs to back the withdrawal agreement element of her deal on Friday, but lost by 58 votes, having already failed twice to get support for her overall deal in Parliament. She now has until 12 April to either seek a longer extension to the deadline or decide to leave the EU without a deal. The Cabinet is now split over whether to move to a softer deal that could mean including a customs union in her plan. It comes as the Tory chief would criticise the government for not making it clear the UK would inevitably have to accept a closer relationship with the EU after Brexit. Julian Smith told a BBC documentary that after his party failed to get a majority in the 2017 election, the government as a whole probably should have just been clearer on the consequences of that. In interviews for the Brexit storm, Laura Quinsberg's inside story, he also accused ministers of trying to undermine the Prime Minister. Mr Smith said he witnessed them sitting around the cabinet table trying to destabilize her, Mrs May, and described their behavior as the worst example of ill-discipline in cabinet in British political history. The thing that people forget is that the Conservative Party went to get a majority in order to deliver Brexit. To avoid all of this. Failed to get a majority. The government as a whole probably should have just been clearer. The consequences of that, the parliamentary arithmetic, would mean that this would be inevitably a kind of softer type of Brexit. The Commons started with MPs debating and voting on a business motion that laid out plans for the votes later and set aside time for any next steps on Wednesday. It was approved by 322 votes to 277. The Speaker John Burkow then decided which motions to take forward for MPs to vote on tonight. He picked four of the eight put forward. He did not choose motions calling for a unilateral exit to the backstop, to leave on 12 April without a deal, to hold a referendum in the case of no deal or to rejoin the European Free Trade Association. You can read more about the proposals here. MPs are now debating the proposals until 20 hundred hours BST, after which, as with the indicative votes last week, MPs will be giving a piece of paper listing all the options and tick yes or no on as many as they want. The House will be suspended for 30 minutes to allow the votes to take place. It took two hours for the votes to be counted before, so the result could be around 2200 hours BST. When MPs voted on proposals last week, all had failed to win a majority in the Commons. However, the plan for a customs union, allowing UK businesses to move goods around the EU without tariffs, but stopping the UK striking independent trade deals, and a confirmatory referendum came the closest. Video. One term that keeps cropping up in the Brexit negotiations is the customs union. The UK's in it because for the moment it's still an EU member, but what does it actually do? Basically, the customs union makes trade between the 28 EU countries easier. When goods move between them, there are no customs checks or charges imposed. But when goods enter the customs union from the rest of the world, there is a common charge known as a tariff. Take cars. A charge is 10% of their value. It's a way of protecting EU goods from cheaper foreign imports. Once the common tariff is paid, goods can move freely around the EU without any more checks or charges. That's one of the main reasons why big Japanese car firms like Nissan set up car plants in the UK for guaranteed smooth access to the whole EU market. 
Obviously though, if you're in the customs union, you've got to play by its rules. Most importantly, one country, the UK for example, can't strike its own trade deals with other countries around the world. The EU negotiates trade deals for all its members. Why? Well, because if the UK was able to set tariffs for imported cars at, say, 5% rather than 10%, then all those cars would be sent to the UK more cheaply and get free access to the rest of the EU, giving the UK an unfair advantage. Now, the government would like to keep most of the benefits of the customs union, but still be able to do its own trade deals with everyone else. But the EU is saying that's not really on offer. So, is there any alternative? Well, a free trade agreement can also remove tariffs and allow you to do other deals elsewhere. But companies importing goods into the EU under a free trade agreement still need to provide detailed proof of how and where those goods are made. Unlike a customs union, that can create bureaucracy, checks and considerable costs. All of which the UK is keen to avoid. A number of cabinet ministers have spoken out against the proposal. International Trade Secretary Liam Fox told the BBC joining a customs union would be a betrayal of Brexit. He said the UK would have to follow rules set by the EU, adding, it's time we went back to a proper Brexit. Environment Secretary Michael Gove said agreeing a customs union would compromise pledges the party made in their 2017 manifesto. While Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson said ministers were determined to avoid that happening. Meanwhile, Tory MP Hugh Merriman has written to around 200 of his colleagues who have voted in favour of Mrs May's deal, appealing for them to back the confirmatory referendum motion to prevent the customs union option succeeding. He said, it is the only option which keeps the PM's deal alive and is not contingent on more EU negotiations. Digital Minister Margo James also told BBC 2's Politics Live that she thinking about changing her mind to back a confirmatory referendum. None of today's votes on the proposals are legally binding, meaning it will be up to the government if they act on the results. However, if agreed, the business motion will ensure MPs again seize control of the business of the House on Wednesday. The next key dates include. Please upgrade your browser. Your guide to Brexit jargon. Use the list below or select a button. The Brexit Storm, Laura Quinsberg's inside story will be broadcast on Monday 1 April at 2100 hours BST on BBC2.